Om Yogis, welcome to this practice with Frigg, the Norse goddess of marriage, fertility and motherhood. Let's start in Shavasana. Taking a moment to let your body rest. Taking a moment to connect with your breath. Taking a moment to let go of the things of the day. And taking a moment to arrive here today. As today we journey inwardly with the Norse goddess Frigg. This practice is dedicated to all wives and mothers as Frigg is a goddess of marriage, motherhood and fertility. If you are not a wife or a mother, don't panic. You can enjoy this practice too and just allow Frigg to mother you for a bit or perhaps dedicate your practice today to a wife or to a mother that you love or admire. A curious fact about Frigg is that the word Friday is derived from an old English word meaning the day of Frigg. That sixth day of the week is also associated with Venus and is thought to be a very good day with Frigg and Venus to appreciate the feminine qualities of the universe. With Frigg especially we connect with our values our traditions and to feelings of motherly love. So let's bring the knee into the chest, just any knee into your chest now and just start to circle your foot. Beautiful, then extend that leg up for a hamstring stretch. Breathing up and down in the back of your leg. Then gently swapping the legs over, bringing the other knee into the chest, circling the foot. And coming into a hamstring stretch on that side. Beautiful, release that when you're ready. Hug both knees in. And gently start to circle your knees, separating them as you go. So both knees are moving outwards and then inwards. Circling the knees. And then hugging both knees back towards the chest. Gently, in your own time, roll to one side. And press yourself up to a comfortable seat. So we're going to come into some alternate nostril breath here. This technique helps to calm the mind and the body. 
by releasing accumulated stress. It also helps to purify the nadis, which are subtle energy channels within the body, which enables a smooth flow of prana or energy. And this de-stresses the mind and the body. The pranayama helps us to relax, making the body more fertile. And we can approach the process of conception with a fresh perspective. And I realize most of us will probably not be trying to conceive a baby, but we're always trying to create and conceive something in our lives. So this practice helps with that. Lovely, so let's bring the right hand, first two fingers into the palm. We're covering the right nostril with the thumb, the left nostril with the third finger. We're gonna cover the right nostril and inhale left for four, three, two, one, and hold the breath. 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, right nostril, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, right, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Exhale, left. Inhale, left. And hold. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. And hold the breath. Exhale, left. Inhale, left. All the way to the collarbones, allowing the shoulders to spread. Hold the breath, visualize the light in your third eye center. Exhale right, as you exhale, squeeze the end of the exhale all the way into the belly so the air is pushed out. Inhale right, feel the air coming in along the front of the spine, lifting the chest. Hold the breath, feel the pulsation of the prana. Exhale left, exhale third eye to tailbone, squeezing the belly, feeling the tailbone move inwards towards the squeeze. Inhale left, allow your shoulders to spread and hold the breath. Prana condenses as it rises. Visualize the light in your third eye center. Allow the prana to condense in the third eye. Exhale right. Relaxing face and shoulders. Inhale right. Feel the air move along the front of the spine, lifting the chest, abdomen, chest and collarbones rise. Hold the breath, feel the pulsation of the prana. Exhale left, third eye to tailbone, squeezing the air out of the belly. Inhale left. Hold the breath. Exhale 
Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Hold the breath. Exhale, left. Inhale, left. Hold the breath. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Hold the breath. Exhale, left. Inhale, left, last round. Hold the breath. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Hold the breath. Exhale left. And relax. Beautiful. From here, let's come into tabletop, bringing the hands behind you, feet to the mat, just lifting the hips. Release that. Come onto all fours. Let's extend opposite arm and leg out now. Holding here, hold and breathe. Back to center, swapping sides. Hold and breathe. Back to center, cat cow. from here back to center and press back child's pose so beautiful freak pays attention to custom and tradition whilst remaining a loving wife and mother just a strong sense of her duties she teaches us to love our families and accept their faults as our own. The next practice for me is really in that theme because we're gonna do humming bee breath, which is often a noise as a mother myself that I make in relation to my family. <laughs> so come to a comfortable seat. This practice adds on to Nadi Shodhana alternate nostril breathing by helping us release anger and tensions. So we're going to do this for about five minutes or so just to give you a rough idea of when to kind of start peeping to see if we're finished. But it's a difficult one to explain really um, 
or to teach because I'm asking you to put your, your thumbs in your ears and your fingers over your eyes and just hum. It's very relaxing to do this, but the problem is, is that you won't be able to hear me or see me. So every now and again, take a little peep or a little listen just to see what's going on. But we're going to go for around five minutes with this. Just to give you a rough idea when to come out. Um, your arms will let you know a little bit because they'll start to tire. So there's nothing to it but to do it. Thumbs in your ears, fingers over your eyes and just start to hum. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
of Liz. Hopefully we're coming out of this roughly at the same time, but don't worry if you go under or over the time. Our next pose is going to be a supported seated forward bend. So grab as many props as you need and come into that when you're ready. Prop yourself in such a way that you can relax here. So you might need to prop behind your knees a little bit so your knees are slightly bent. So you can lean forward into your props. Once you find your pose, just try to relax into it. Let go completely. So this seated forward bend stimulates the uterus and the ovaries, helping with depression that might be arising from our misconceptions or our faulty perspectives. As Odin's wife, Frigg was a goddess that was respected for her foresight and wisdom. She was known as a great seer or a great seeress. Said to be able to see into the future. Her future perspectives helped her overlook or tap into present problems. So she could look at the problems of the now and sort out which ones needed immediacy and which problems could wait. So she knew which ones to deal with. She was sorting the wheat from the chaff in that way. Which was one of her many skills. However, her story also teaches that when it comes to our children, it is sort of futile to try to keep them safe from the world. Even with her foresight, one of Freak's sons was tricked by a god into killing the other. So Freak sort of teaches us in relationship to our families, you know, we can worry all we want, but we can only do so much. The rest is up to the gods. All we can do is to look at our present problems and see what we can do and what we can't do, what needs immediacy and what can wait. You can only do so much. The rest is up to the gods. And as a, a wife and a mother, this is a hard earned lesson. It's not an easy one. So in this pose, we can take a moment to look into our lives and see what it is that needs our immediate attention and what can 
weight. We can perhaps look at where we are, worrying pointlessly because we can only do so much. Freak's message is we can only do so much, the rest is up to the gods. As strong and as powerful and as insightful as she was, even Freak could not control the destiny of her own children. Okay, that's beautiful. Let's come out of that when you're ready. And come back into tabletop pose. So plant your feet, plant your hands and push your hips up. Just to counter that long forward fold. When you're ready, come back to all fours. And let's set, extend opposite arm and leg out. Use your belly to hold the pose and breathe for a second or two. Swap in sides. Coming into cat cow. Coming back to center and pressing back downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, let's walk the hands back to the feet. Come into a standing forward bend here. Check that your feet are underneath your hips. If you've got any pressure in your lower back, bend your knees.
This posture releases stress in the stomach and stretches the back muscles, improving blood supply to the pelvis and to the nervous system. Hold and breathe. Now bend your knees, heavy in your tailbone as you roll up through your spine slowly, slowly, head and shoulders come up last. Turn to the side edge of your mat for a wide leg forward fold. Inhale, open your chest. Exhale, fold on in. And you can stay centered here, or you can just start to move your body side to side over each leg, if that works for you today. So the goddess Frigg lived in Asgard, as many Norse goddesses and gods did. And she possessed superhuman abilities as all wives and mothers sometimes have to. <laughs> there are many, many stories of Frigg outwitting her husband, Odin. These stories give us an indication of the high status that women enjoyed in Norse society and Norse mythology. To be a wife and a mother gave a woman a high status. And Frigg was capable of many, if not, if not all of the, sorry, of many, if not all of the behaviors of men. Women in Norse, myth Norse mythology were independent characters. Frigg was well matched with Odin. She was not a secondary character to him. Wives were not secondary to their husbands or their children. So Freak teaches a certain equality within the family. She stands beside Odin, her husband, as his equal, as was the way in Norse tradition. And we can draw from that. We can draw from that now. Coming back to center when you're ready. Bend the knees if you need to. We're gonna inhale, come on up. And come to the top of the mat. Let's inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, fold on in. Inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, back to plank. Inhale in plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, little baby cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog.
from downward facing dog let's come to sit extending your left foot forward bringing your right foot in towards your thigh for Janu Shasasana A prop yourself if you need to actually don't prop yourself let's use this pose to strengthen the back today Sending the heart forwards. Hold and breathe. So Freak teaches equality. She stands beside Odin as, as his equal, as was the way in Norse tradition. And we can ask ourselves in this practice today, are we being fair to our partners? Are they being fair to you? Is there weight on the scales? Would you balance each other out? Or are you giving too much? Or are you taking too much? Is there a mutual respect in your relationships? A mutual understanding? Or is there some kind of unhealthy codependency creeping in? Can you accept their faults as your own or are you focusing on them, separating from them because of their faults and forgetting your own imperfections? If you're single, we can still look at this. We can look, is your masculine dominating your feminine? Are you relentlessly pushing or ignoring a softer side of yourself? Or is your feminine manipulating your masculine, making excuses and procrastinating? Where is your balance between being and doing? Weighed on the scales, how would that look? Let's inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, come on out, swap sides, come back in on the other side. Taking this time now to look at equality in your relationship, equality within yourself. Look at our own practices of equality, our own habits of equality. Where are they today? Let's inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, come on out of that. Bring the soles of your feet together for butterfly. Just hold that for a moment, close your eyes. Let that stretch start to develop in the inner thighs. Feel the equality between left and right side. Feel the equality within you between being and doing. Weight on the scales, how would that look? How much are you being, how much are you doing? How is that looking today? And as inhale, open your chest, offer your chest, and as you exhale, Fold forward a little bit to your own capacity. Hold and breathe here.
Inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, come on out of that. And we're going to come into the supine butterfly or Bhadakanasana pose, propping yourself if you need to. So basically, feet together, knees wide, lie down. Prop under your knees if you need to, so you can completely relax. So lovely is working with free, we can ask ourselves, have we got the qualities of a great seer? So can you see the bigger picture at play in your life? What is your capacity to shift your perspective? Can you shift your perspective so you can work from a future perspective, maybe? Look into the future a little bit. This quality with Freak helped her to choose to either overlook or tap into present issues and problems. So sorting the wheat from the chaff she knows what needs immediacy and what can wait. Which battle to fight and which ones to walk away from. When to be soft and when to be strong. This is a skill that all mothers and wives have to learn. Okay, lovely. Let's come out of that when you're ready. We've got a bit of a strange transition now, coming from supine Bhadakanasana to legs up the wall. So take your time getting there. You might want to take a, a 
cat cow or a down dog in between, whatever feels right for your body, you might want to go straight into it. But let's meet in legs up the wall when you're ready. This pose improves blood flow to the pelvis. It relaxes and releases tired feet, ankles and legs, and relaxes the mind. Something that all mothers need more of. all mothers and everyone, all of us. Close your eyes, lovelies, and relax. Let your back spread against the floor. Let this pose be a little bit of a retreat for you today. When Odin went away, Frigg is said to have retreated to her own realm called Fenselia, whose location was unknown by others. Fenselia, it sounds so romantic, but it actually translates into halls of the swamp. <laughs> this was a sacred place where Freak would go alone making Frigg, to my mind at least, a water goddess. A goddess who takes time to introspect and attune to her emotions. And for sure, any of us that have practiced introspection for a long amount of time, we know it can get a bit swampy. <laughs> I think Fenselia is where she would go into all the dark and murky places within her in order to purify her power and become stronger and sort the wheat from the chaff emotionally. You know, which emotions are transient and which ones really need attention? Which emotions might be passing through and which ones are screaming out to get unstuck? that have been sort of stuck in us for too long. And poor Freak, it is written that in Fenselia she wept for the death of her son, which was her first grief, but she also felt a second grief, which was the foreseeing of her, the death of her beloved husband, Odin. So this place of introspection, you know, is not always so pretty. Not always so easy. Closing your eyes, lovelies. If you haven't done so already, close your eyes. And in your mind's eye, See a muscular woman with sharp blue eyes and soft braided blonde hair walking towards you. She is strong with a perfectly balanced stride. She holds a baby on her hip 
and a sword in her hand and she's smiling broadly at you today. I am Frigg and Frigg now speaks. You can only do so much. The rest is up to the gods. The sacred waters are sacred places of emotional release, of cleansing and regeneration. Sometimes we cannot gain any traction in our lives unless emotional water can flow. Know this, internal movement pushes external change and women understand this process more easily than men because they are generally more internal. I have a position, every wife and every mother has a position and is afforded a due respect but this is not only about external power but about the ability to go within. We all need a place to go, where we can get into the water somehow. Because there is a sacred balance within everything in nature. Loss of this balance is like the loss of a leg. Movement is difficult, for sure. And as a mother and Odin's wife, I need to stand on my own two feet equally. This is my message and my wish for you. Find your balance within, remain balanced in your life, and find your feet in your relationships so you can stand your ground. Freak now leans in towards you, placing a small sprig of mistletoe onto your head. This berry has my blessing and I kiss all who walk under it. She turns and with that vanishes from your sight.
Okay, lovelies, in whatever way works, bring yourself out of that. Bring yourself to lie down. Actually, no, let's stay seated. To cast in a cross leg position. Let's take an easy twist to the left and hold and breathe here. Come back to centre when you're ready and twist to the right. Hold and breathe here. Find your balance left to right side. Come back to center, switch the cross of your legs, twist again to the, left, the right side, go the other way, hold and breathe. Back to centre, twist the other way. Come back to centre when you're ready. So we're going to come into a short yoga nidra now. So please make sure that you're going to be comfortable for the next 15, 20 minutes maybe. So grab your pillows, grab your blocks, grab your blankets, prop yourself, make a little, a lovely little nest for yourself here to relax within. So make sure you're comfortable and then fine tune your comfort even more. It's super important to be comfortable. Lying down on your mat. Sorry, I take it for granted you know that. Beautiful. So during this relaxation, you can move if you want to, but if you do need to move, try to do it slowly and gently. If you can stay completely still, stay completely still. I'm going to take you through a visualization towards the end of our relaxation, but you don't have to listen to everything I say. It's perfectly fine if you drift off sometimes drift off into your own fencilia or private world or have your own experience it's absolutely fine but we're going to start this relaxation by scanning the body whilst we do this it would be useful to stay with me so first of all bring your awareness to your breath
If you like, you can exhale, sorry, inhale through the nose, allow your belly to expand, and exhale out through the mouth with a sigh, relaxing the whole body. Again, inhale through the nose, create space. And exhale, soften, let go. Do this a few more times at your own pace. And we begin the body scan now. So when I mention a body part, bring your awareness there. And if you like, you can imagine each part of the body that I mention filling with a warm, golden, nurturing light. So we're gonna start at the top of the head. Come to the forehead, the right eye, the left eye, both eyes together, the nose, the mouth, right cheek, left cheek, both cheeks together. Right ear, left ear, both ears together, the back of the head, the neck, the throat. And now we focus on the right side of the body, feel a golden light gently touching your right shoulder upper arm, forearm, and hand, the whole right arm, the right armpit, the outside of right ribs and waist, and the space between the outside of the upper body and the arm. The right side of the chest, the right side of the belly, the right hip, thigh, lower leg and foot, the whole right leg, right side of pelvis, right lower back, upper back, the whole right side of the body, notice if there are differences between the sensations in the right and left side of the body, Now bring your awareness to the left side of the body, a golden light gently touching the left shoulder, upper arm, forearm and hand, whole left arm, left armpit, outside of the ribs and wa waist, space between the side of the body and the arm, left side of chest, the heart, left side of belly, left hip, thigh, lower leg and foot, whole left leg, left side of pelvis, 
lower back, upper back, whole left side of body. Now feel your whole body, the whole body. The whole body glowing golden. Now bring your awareness to rest at the soles of your feet for a moment and just observe how it feels. If there is no sensation at all, that is also an observation. If you want, when you breathe in, imagine drawing energy up through the soles of the feet, along the legs, upper body, all the way to the shoulders. As you exhale, energy moves in the opposite direction from shoulders, all the way down, out and through the soles of the feet. Inhale, soles of feet to shoulders. Exhale, shoulders to soles of feet at your own pace. Like a soft wave that gives you energy, that washes anything you don't want or need away. Now let go of the awareness of your breath. And explore if any part of your body feels a little warmer than the rest. If you can't find anything special, you can choose to focus on the heart, imagining a nurturing warmth in there. Now feel if any part of your body feels a little cooler than the rest. And if you can't find anything cool, you can choose to focus on the sensation between your upper lip and nose. Feeling the cool air as you inhale. Now bring your attention back to where it feels warm. And then back to where it feels cool. Then back to where it feels warm. And imagine that warmth is expanding in the body when the warmth reaches the area that feels cool. These two merge, the warmth meets the cool, and you come into a perfect temperature and balance. And let go. Now let's imagine that we're walking in a beautiful forest. Look around you and notice the time and the season. Is it spring, summer, autumn or winter? Is it night or day, morning or evening? Now 
The forest is carpeted with wild flowers. And you can see them because a soft light is streaming in through the trees. Is it sunlight or moonlight? You look down at what you are wearing, feeling comfortable and relaxed. Deciding to explore this magical place you can choose to continue walking through the forest or take a shortcut through a grassy meadow. You notice the ground underfoot, the sounds of nature all around you, the air upon your skin. You hear the rippling sound of water and you start to walk in that direction. What does the path look like? How does it feel underneath your feet? Maybe soft moss, cool stone, dry dirt or maybe something else. Eventually you reach the water, maybe it's a brook, or a lake, or a small waterfall, or even the ocean. And you sit down and enjoy tranquility. Here you sit for a while if you want, or maybe you choose to dive into the water and swim, or perhaps there is a small boat that could carry you on the water if you prefer. You take time with the water in your own way. Maybe just dipping your toes in. visualize yourself sitting next to the water again, feeling refreshed, feeling warm, comfortable and safe. And you get up now and continue walking. After a while, you reach a secret garden. There is a small gate, almost hidden by bushes and trees. And it creaks as you open it and you step in. It 
It is so peaceful here. Vines and weeds, undergrowth, trees, beautiful flowers, berries and fruits. What is it that you see in this secret garden? What kind of plants do you see? What kind of garden is this? And you see a swing and a bench within this garden. And you choose one of them and you sit down feeling so relaxed and so very free. Something stirs within you and you know it is time to leave this place in nature. But you can come back here anytime because this is your realm, your retreat, your fencelier. So let's initiate a slow and gentle return. listening to the sounds around you. Feeling your body. Feeling your breath. Deepen in your breath. Gently begin to move your hands and feet. Maybe you want to stretch your arms above your head and yawn. Do what feels good. No, you have visited your own Fensalia. Your experience is your own. And draw your knees up towards your chest. Rock a little side to side. Roll to one side. And in your own time, come up to seated. Take a moment with your hands at your heart, giving thanks to the goddess Frigg, who shows us how to stand on our own two feet equally. 
to find balance within, to remain balanced in our lives, find our feet in our relationships and stand our ground. She reminds us to honor the position of mother and wife. Sometimes there is so much we can do and sometimes we can only do so much. The rest is up to the gods. So with gratitude to you for your practice, with gratitude to the goddess Frigg, and with gratitude to all wives and all mothers, Namaste.